Chapter Twenty. T. Tai Chi. The wise men of China use Tai Chi to indicate that to which we return upon leaving this world. It is the ultimate or the end of all things incarnate. It is reunion with one's overself, and a state which upon earth one can only liken to bliss. Talk. It is a sad fact that so many people talk too much, and about things of which they have no knowledge. People get hold of half a story, and they immediately rush away to their nearest and dearest and make a story and a half out of it, and complete fiction at that. People should be like the three wise monkeys: see no evil, hear no evil, and say no evil. People should be like the wise old owl who believes that those who talk least hear most. Most people emit a torrent of sound, like the falling waters of Niagara Falls. They babble, they drivel, they open their mouths, and let all their ramblings, unsorted, senseless thoughts, come pouring out in cacophony of unrelated sound, discordant sound too. When a person is talking, a person is not learning, and if a person does not learn, well, they can come back to this earth until they do learn. The best thing that most people could do would be to put a sticking plaster over their lips and keep their ears wide open. Tamas, this is inertia, laziness, prejudice. It is that which enables things to maintain a constant form. When we go to the cinema or when we look at television, we are suffering from static inertia, and without static inertia, we should not be able to see the intermittent flickering pictures of the cinematograph film or of television. In the eyes, this static inertia could be termed residual ocular memory. A person who is lazy or sluggish is a tamasic person. Tan matras. This is actually five fundamental principles which correspond to the senses of touch, sight, hearing, taste, and smell, and which we have with us while we are in the conscious state, and which correspond to air, fire, earth, ether, and water. Tantras. Tantra applies to any of the writings or scriptures connected with the worship of Shakti. The purpose of tantras is to give one a philosophy or discipline which enables us, through their correct practice, to obtain liberation from ignorance, liberation from rebirth through direct knowledge. Tao, in the days before the communists upset the human values, Tao was the way, the principle, the truth. Tao is that which shows us how to proceed, shows us the path which we must follow. It teaches us, in essence. To take the middle way. Tapas. This is something which the aspirant yogi has to do every day. It is a form of body conditioning. One has to do certain breathing exercises. One has to have certain mental disciplines. Discipline makes the difference between a proud army and a rabble. Discipline makes the difference between a genuine yogi and a genuine fake. Some people are not able to discriminate between truth and fiction. The latter go in for all sorts of absurd exercises, far beyond anything that is necessary or desirable, and they spend so much time flinging their arms and legs about and getting in weird and unnatural positions that they have no time or energy left for spiritual development. Tara, I must put in this word as a tribute to Ireland. Ireland has ballads about the halls of Tara, wonderful songs relating to history of long bygone days. In the metaphysical world, Tara means the saviour, but in this case, the saviour is the divine mother, who was the consort of Sheba. Taraka, this is actually a centre between and in front of the eyebrows, and if a pupil is meditating correctly, he or she will be able to see or sense a light in front of and between the eyebrows. Taro. This is a pack of cards, seventy-eight cards in all, and the Akashic record says that these cards contain the knowledge of the Book of Thoth. The cards contain, for those who can read them, all the knowledge of past history. But nowadays they are also used for divination. Tarot cards are shuffled, and one subconscious magnetizes certain cards in much the same way as a piece of ebony, when rubbed, can attract a piece of tissue paper, or in the same way as a piece of magnet can attract a piece of iron.
The subconscious, which is nine-tenths of us, exerts a magnetic influence through the etheric, and so certain cards are subconsciously selected. Tarot cards in the hands of a genuine person are genuine, and they are quite infallible. Tatvam Asi In a lamasri, the students have to meditate on that which, of course, is the over-self, and they have to be able to distinguish that from this, the latter of which is the manifestation. When the students are able to distinguish between that and this, they are able to say the truth, Tatvam Asi, which means that you are. Te, a Chinese word relating to virtue. Virtue, of course, has to be moral, but te also relates to power in all senses of the word. You can have power for good and power for bad, but te most often refers to virtue and power used for good. Telepathy. Telepathy is the art or science or ability whereby we pick up and understand the brain waves of others. Just as a radio station broadcasts a program, so does the human brain also a form of radio station, broadcast the thoughts of the person to whom the brain is attached. Thought is an electrical impulse, or series of impulses, and thought radiates everywhere just as does the program from a radio station, so any person with training can become telepathic, that is, they can tune in to the thoughts of another person, and can also inject one's own thoughts into the receptive areas of another person. Teleportation. This is a little understood science in the Western world. Teleportation is the art of sending a material object by thought to another location. A poltergeist, for example, can pick up a large object such as a chair and cause it to move violently across a room. In the Far East, suitable trained llamas can cause a heavy material object to be transported by thought to another location. Gravity, which gives a thing apparent weight, is merely a magnetic attraction between the object and the core of the Earth. Under certain conditions, the magnetic attraction can be lessened or entirely removed, so that the material object becomes less heavy and actually without weight. This process is adopted when an article is being teleported. It is also a system in use during levitation. T. N. Lai this is divine law, the law of heaven, the law of that place to which you go when you leave this world. Tien Tai, this is the origin of life, the universe, everything. It is allness, that which is, is, and which always has been. Touchstone Centuries and centuries ago, when the world was a much wiser place than it is now, before the age of aspirins and various tranquilizer drugs, the priests and wise men had methods of calming a person who was nervous or irritable, or in some way off colour. They made tranquilizer touchstones. These very special stones were shaped in a particular manner, so that by gently rubbing them one could obtain a pleasant tactile impression which soothed the troubled mind, prevented one from having ulcers and bad tempers and hysteria. You might also like to read more about this under stones. Trance a real trance is the condition when the astral body willingly vacates the physical body in order that the former may witness some occurrence which can be reported back to some person through the silver cord and the physical body. At times, a person of mediumistic capabilities will be willing to have his or her body used by some disincarnate entity who wants to give a message. In such a case, the medium sits in a position of repose and wills the astral body to depart from the physical body. Then a disincarnate entity can catch hold of the silver cord and cause the physical body of the medium to give a necessary message. After the message, or whatever it is, is finished, the discarnate entity relinquishes the hold and the astral returns to the physical of the medium. Untrained people should never dabble in trance work or in seances because it can have a very harmful effect upon the health. It is safe under certain conditions, but only under trained supervision. Treta Yuga As we have said previously in this book, World periods are divided into different phases. Trita Yuga is the second of four world periods, and this one is 1,296,000 years. 
Turiya. This is the fourth state of consciousness. It is not connected with waking or dreaming or dreamless sleep. Instead, it is a form of being superconscious. One reaches such a stage when one is correctly meditating, because then one gets beyond thought, beyond wisdom, and into a state which is almost the equivalent of astral consciousness. In the Turiya state, one experiences things not of the earth. Tiyaga this is the absolute renunciation of possessions and what one might term social activities. One who has given up or renounced all possessions, such as a hermit or a recluse, is known as a tiagai, a man of renunciation. So, tiaga is giving up possessions and social activities, and tiagai is the man who has already given up possessions and social activities.